Hello, everyone. Um, so this talk is based on a bunch of research I've done at OpenAI. Um, it's also a talk in the spirit of a provocation. So, you know, I was thinking to myself yesterday, a lot of people disagree about a lot of stuff, but like what's one thing that all the speakers agreed upon? They don't really agree on whether there are three types of AI risk or four types of AI risk, but they all agree that there's at least misuse and misalignment. Um, so, you know, misuse, humans using AIs to do bad things. Misalignment, AI is autonomously deciding to do bad things. The, the question of this talk is, what if we just should get rid of that distinction and not use it? Um, so I'll make this argument in two steps. Firstly, it's just not actually a useful distinction on a technical level. And secondly, it's not a very useful distinction on a governance level. Um, the 10 second version of the argument is something like, uh, right now, AIs are tools, and therefore misuse and misalignment, like, like you know, humans, uh, use AIs, but as AIs become agents, uh, the way that you will misuse an AI is basically tell it, telling it to go off and do something autonomously. And so, like, the process of an AI doing something in a misaligned way versus a human using uh, an AI um, for misuse is going to look identical in many ways except for the very first bit. And maybe that very first bit is just not the main thing we should be focusing on when trying to divide up threat models. Okay, so that's the like 10 second version of the argument. Here's the four minute version. So um, you might say, look, sure, like I agree that like in practice, like misuse and misalignment might lead to many of the same threats, but we really need this distinction on a technical level. We really need to make sure that the work we do focuses on preventing misalignment. But I actually think that like if you try really hard to prevent misuse, on a technical level, you'll like end up doing a lot of the same work that you want to do to prevent misalignment as well. Uh, so you can see this kind of analogy between a lot of stuff that you have on each side. So for example, from a misalignment perspective, you want to monitor AI behavior. But from a misuse perspective, you also want to monitor user behavior and the user interactions with AIs. These just aren't that different. Like a lot of the infrastructure that you need to set up, the monitoring apparatus, are going to overlap. Uh, from a misalignment perspective, you want to detect whether AIs are deceptively aligned. They might have, you know, uh, points in time when they change their minds and, and like start to pursue a totally different policy. This is like a pretty similar technical problem to trying to detect whether an AI has been backdoored. In both cases, there's going to be some set of inputs that's going to like lead them to radically change their behavior and do something totally out of distribution. Um, uh, you might worry from a misalignment perspective about steganography, right? Like AIs passing messages between each other. But this is, in some sense, the problem, the technical problem of, you know, can one AI give an input to another AI that will lead it to do something bad? And this is, in some sense, the same problem as jailbreaking, except in the jailbreaking case, it's usually a human giving the input. Uh, and we can sort of, like, follow through. I, I won't go do all of these for interests of time, but I think um, uh, there, there are these like fairly strong analogies on a lot of the technical work that you might want to do in both cases. I, I, on a government's perspective, I'm going to zoom in on this last one. So like rogue AI analogous to concentration of power. What do I mean by that? Well, like on a governance level, the problem is that both misuse and misalignment are radically different depending on which actors are doing the misuse. So take the example of bioweapons, right? A lot of people talk about bioweapons as a misuse problem, right? We release open source AI, terrorists build bioweapons, that's really bad. Um, the problem is that actually most of the worst bioweapons are probably built, or in some cases have been built, by military um, actors and like state level actors, right? And when you start thinking about the problem of bioweapons uh, from state actors, a lot of your conclusions might totally flip. For example, you might want more open source because uh, open source is used for defense, whereas the state actors that are building bioweapons uh, will, be, will have the AIs no matter whether they're open sourced or not, and they'll be using them for offense either way, right? So actually, even something that seems as simple as bioweapons is actually a very different threat model depending on which actors involved are doing it. And similarly, misalignment threat models are very different depending on if your AI is just like on a server in the Bahamas somewhere and it's misaligned versus it's on uh, the servers of an AI company and it's deployed to a million people versus it's you know deployed widely throughout a major military, right? Th these are all very different threat models for misalignment. So here's my proposal. Um, we define a misaligned coalition as a group of humans and AIs that are attempting to grab power in illegitimate ways. You have a bunch of different types of misaligned coalitions. You have terrorist groups, like law-breaking corporations, and so on. And most of the time, both for technical and governance work, we don't need to know who's in charge inside that coalition. The AIs might be in charge, the humans might be in charge, nobody might know who's in charge, but we can like try and tackle the problem the same either way. And I, I think, like, I don't have a clear classification of different types of um, 
uh, uh, misaligned coalitions, but I'd flag that there's, they range from small-scale actors to large-scale actors. And if you're more worried about small-scale actors, you're really worried about risks from decentralization of AI. Whereas if you're worried about large-scale actors, you're worried about risks from centralization. I have a story where like, the Democrats are more worried about the top one, the Republicans are more worried about the bottom one. I don't want AI safety to split too much into two divided coalitions based on this, and so I really want us to sort of notice these two types of divides and then try and figure out a frame that unifies them and tackles both types of risks. Thank you.